Hi guys, we're gonna be working on a cool project today about trees. Before you get started, please go and check out the video that I posted before the activity on Vincent Van Gogh's Olive Trees. If you know me, I love me some Vincent Van Gogh and um, this is kind of a different perspective on Van Gogh. So go check it out and come back and we'll get started. Okay guys, for this project, after you've watched your video, you're going to need just a short list of things. You're gonna need a paper plate. You're gonna need some yarn. It can be any color. One pipe cleaner. You need a hole puncher. Glue, not a glue stick, but out of a bottle. You're gonna also need some tape. Clear tape's fine, whatever you have. All right, we're gonna get started. Many of you guys have seen me wear this necklace at school and asked me what it was. It's called the Tree of Life, and it kind of reminds me of some of those um, olive trees that you saw in the video about Vincent Van Gogh. We're gonna be talking about this and working on a project where we're doing some weaving like this artisan did, and we're gonna be adding some interesting color to the top, and it's gonna be kind of bowed over in a circular pattern with some roots on the bottom and a heavier top kind of balance each one of each other out. So here's our project. This is what we're gonna be working on. All right, for the first part of your project, you're gonna need a paper plate. When you get your paper plate, you will notice that there is a indention around the center right here. That'll be a good place to start for cutting um, your line inside your plate. So in order to get into that part, if you will just fold your plate over a little, you don't want to crease it. You just want to fold it over and make a little nip in your paper, okay? Just enough to get your scissors in the hole. All right, if you will follow that indention right around here, and you want to cut this out. So we're keeping the frame and we're not using the inside. So that's okay, we want that all right, so I'm gonna to try to make it as smooth as I can. Turning my paper instead of my scissors. And cut out the center part of your paper plate. I was telling the younger classes today that I had gone to the Dollar Tree to buy some supplies and I was um, surprised to find that there was a lot of things still in stock, and so you can go by a Dollar Tree and pick up things for projects. It's not that expensive. All right, for the second part, after you have your hole cut out, you're gonna be flipping your um, paper plate over. This is gonna be the front part that you're gonna use as your frame in the design. Okay, um, your next part is gonna be punching some holes around the top and some, a few less on the bottom of your paper. And that is gonna help you with uh, your tree to get a heavier top and a smaller bottom. Now remember, um, the more holes you punch, the more strings you're gonna to have to add of your yarn. So that, you'll see that in just a moment. Okay, I'm gonna go around and just randomly punch a few holes out and make this my bottom. I don't want as many in my bottom as I have in my top. Two, three, four, five. You don't want to get your dots too close, your holes punched too close together because if you do, um, it's going to tear when you put your scissors, I mean, your strings through. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I did seven at the bottom. I think I'm going to double my number at the top and put 14. Okay, so I want to go into my paper up here and kind of look where the middle may be and kind of use that as a guide and cut out about 14 holes. All right, so there you go. I've got 14 at the top, seven at the bottom, okay? I'll move these out of the way. My piece of tape is just to tell me where my camera goes, if you're wondering. Okay, 
So these are my 14, this is gonna be the top, seven at the bottom. In your design, if you will pre-cut you some strip, strings of yarn, okay? That's what we're gonna be using to build our tree. And your pipe cleaner, okay? Now your pipe cleaner may, if it's a, an extra long one like this one, it may be a little too long for the project, so you kinda of have to measure it as you're going along. And if you need to cut some off the end, you can. The idea is that you want to curve your tree trunk. So this is gonna be like the spine of your tree, okay? All right, so I'm gonna go on this side of my ring at the top of my paper. Let me flip this over. I want the curved up part to be my inside and the curved out part to be my front. All right, so I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna find a place to nest my pipe cleaner. And I'm gonna grab a piece of tape and I'm gonna fasten this down inside my paper plate. I want to try to skip my holes so I don't cover them up. And then I'm gonna bring my spine down here of my tree, kind of like a skeleton of this tree. I'm gonna put it down between two of the dots down here and I'm gonna attach it so that it is angled at a curve. I want that nice curve going on. All right, it's a little bit too long, so I'm gonna take my scissors and trim that off. Okay. Okay, now I have a nice curved um, pipe cleaner in here. This is gonna help support all of my tree parts, okay? Okay, the in most interesting part of this is to get your string from here to here. So I'm gonna start off by going to the front of my paper, sliding my string through the hole and to the back. And I found it easier to go ahead and attach each one of these separately. You wanna get hold on these so they don't slide around when you're moving the rest of this later that you're adding on. Okay, so it'll take me a few minutes to get this. Make sure they're securely attached. Some of my strings are a little longer than the other. That's okay. No problems, no problems. And from the back, and from the front, and out through the back, and I tape it down. It's a little monotonous, but it's okay. You just keep this same rhythm going. And soon you'll be finished. I keep sliding my strings back so it doesn't get in the way. I'm coming up on my pipe cleaner, so I'm going to make sure. And I taped it down that I didn't get too close to the holes because now you understand it would have covered up one of your spaces and your numbers wouldn't have worked out correctly. Okay, we're almost there. Start from the back. Bring it into the top. The bottom moves much faster once you get your wrapping. This tree kind of forms itself once you get started. This is the slowest part of the project, is filling in this top. It's kind of like weaving. It's kind of calming to do this. We've got a couple more to go here. 
Make sure when you're cutting your string, you count your string so you know how many strings you'll need for your holes, and that way you don't have to go back and cut more. So I did the math a little bit before I started this project. And our last one, we're almost done here. Okay. And from the back, and then tape it down. Now, all of my ends are nice and secure, along with my pipe cleaner, and then my pieces are hanging off the back. Now, the tree is gonna form itself as you start to wrap. I found it was a little easier to wrap your pieces around your main trunk here that you're doing. So I just gathered them up in one, maybe a couple of clumps and just wrapped it around the pipe cleaner. You don't want to pull too tight. You want a little bit of movement in your branches, but you can just take them and go over and under, over and under. And you don't want to go all the way to the bottom, but pretty close. When you get down to about right here, you can stop. And I'm gonna take my second cluster of branches, make sure you get all of them, and just wrap it over the trunk again. Don't do it too tight because you may want to go back and tug on it a little bit. And you also want some slack down at the bottom so these kind of spread out when you put them in. You may even want to go in and if you get them feel like they're too tight, do a little tug on them before uh, you actually finish it off on the bottom with the taping. So you can just take your finger in there and softly pull until it kind of looks. You can flip it over and kind of get an idea of what your project's gonna look like back here. And if they're a little tight, you can pull on them a little bit, straighten them out a little bit, okay? Now you're gonna take these ends on the back and you're gonna do the same thing as you did before. It needs to be on the opposite side of the plate. And this time, instead of doing one string through the hole, do two, okay? So I'm gonna flip this over and grab a couple of strings and I'm going to push them through one hole. Might be easier to flip it over like this. Pull it through, go to your back, um, add a piece of tape right over that. Check your strings before you cut them, that they're loose enough, and trim them off, just like that. And you're gonna keep doing this project process until you run out of strings. So I've got a couple of short ones here, so I'm gonna go to my next hole here and pull them through. Somehow two got a little shorter than the others, but that's okay. They fit just fine right there. I'm gonna pull these down. All right, we're make, making some progress here. Oops, I skipped a couple of holes, but that's okay. Roots go all crazy places, and that's fun. I'm gonna pull out a couple more strings. Push it through the hole. Trees are very organic. They follow their own path when they start growing. And so there's no right or wrong way to do this. You want it kind of messy looking. So when you're doing it, it's not, you know, too well thought out. You just want to make sure your string numbers work, work out okay. Flip this over. I like to pull mine back and forth, flipping it over to the front, to the back so that I get an idea of what it's gonna look like when I'm finished. Okay, almost done, three more. I'm going to pull two of my shorter ones because I know that's probably not gonna reach once I get to the end for my next cluster right here. strings I have. I have three. I don't know how that happened, but anyway, I want to make it work. So I'm going to take um, one for the next hole. Push it through. Flip over. Tape it down. And my 
last two. I'm checking to make sure I've got, whoops, one of those were shorter, so I'll just kind of work it in. That's okay, no problem. I'm gonna fix that little part right there. Sometimes you have creative mistakes and that's fine. All right, it's not gonna hurt the whole process. All right, last two, I'm gonna make sure I have all my other strings in place. Slide those down. Remember, this is the front that I'm doing this from. Pulling in this to the back. So this will be kind of what my finished product will look like. I'll take this down, check my strings, trim them. It's a very organic weaving. It's not what we normally think of when we're thinking about our trees and weaving process. All right, so we've got our basic for our tree. You can kind of see with my hand behind there a little better. The roots are kind of spreading out. The branches are spreading out. Now the last piece that we're going to be working on is adding, there you go, you can see a little better now, uh, is adding a little color to the top because remember when I was showing you um, the necklace that I was working from, it has a very colorful top, okay? And to do that, you need a little tissue paper. You could go through Christmas gifts or boxes or bags that your mom or dad saved from presents from other people or whatever. Um, or if you happen to have tissue paper around the house, that's great too. Please recycle. Do all the recycling you can for this project. All right. For my glue, it's clear. It's not normally like our school glue. Now this is going to be the top of my tree. So I'm going to reverse this so it's easier for me to get to. And I'm going to add a little glue in small spaces. And I'm going to take some tissue paper and ball it up into really tight little pieces. And then I'm going to start adding my tissue paper around the perimeter of my tree where my branches and my leaves and my foliage would be. It's going to make to be our foliage for our tree. You can do a little overlapping. You can come in close to the branches. You can move out to the edge. As I was thinking about this and talking about, thinking about the process that we were working with, with the trees and the concept of Van Gogh, I thought, well, why, before you started this, why didn't you go in and kind of make this into a landscape with a horizontal line and a starry night sky? Just an idea. You could probably think about doing something like that with yours. I didn't. And just keep adding these until you've covered your whole perimeter of your tree. You can make this come down as far as you'd like. And like I said, if you want to go back in and add a horizon line and do um, other details maybe in your sky, you could do that, okay? All right, I'm gonna slide this aside and show you my finished product. Here we go, this is my finished product. I'm gonna slide a piece of paper under it so you can see it a little better. All right, and that's my finished tree. All right, I hope this will be a fun project for you guys. Um, take your time, pause the video if you need to, um, go back and review some of the steps if I've gone too fast, and have fun with this, guys, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye, stay safe.